Now, the Chinese foreign minister is visiting Australia for the first time in seven years. Australia and China are rebuilding ties following a period of strained relations after Canberra called for an independent investigation into the origins of COVID-19. In response, Beijing imposed tariffs on imports of Australian goods. The tariffs cost Australia's economy an estimated $13 billion. The past twists and turns over the decade leaves us with lessons to draw on as well as valuable experience. I think that fundamentally it's about staying committed to mutual respect. China never interferes in Australia's internal affairs. We respect the system and the path that Australia has chosen. And when it comes to China's sovereignty, dignity and legitimate concerns, we of course hope that Australia will continue to abide by the commitments made at the establishment of diplomatic ties and since then to provide your respect and proper handling. And as Foreign Minister, I have emphasised that it is in all of our interests to commit to preventive architecture to reduce the risk of conflict and that communication never be withheld as punishment or offered as reward. As you know, dialogue enables us to manage our differences. We both know it does not eliminate them. Australia will always be Australia and China will always be China. Now more than ever, it is important that we have channels to discuss upholding a regional and global order shaped by agreed rules and norms where we respect each other's sovereignty. Well, Adrian Brown joins us live now from New Zealand's capital, Wellington. Adrian, so how significant then is this trip to Australia and what more did both foreign ministers have to say? Well, it's very important, Darren. It's, a lot has happened in the last seven years since Wang Yi was last here in New Zealand and also in Australia. We've had COVID, of course, and Australia's call during COVID for there to be a full investigation into the origins of the disease. That led to uh, China imposing punitive tariffs of up to 218% on Australian wine, as well as things like beef and cotton. Now, that hurt Australia's economy very much, as you pointed out, in your introduction, it cost them something like $13 billion. Well, now it seems that relations are finally easing. But as Penny Wong has pointed out, great challenges remain in trying to manage the relationship with China. They are going to have to agree to disagree. Penny Wong says that Australia wants to cooperate with China, but they will disagree when they have to. Wong Yi, as you heard uh, in that clip you played a short time ago, essentially politely reminded Australia to respect uh, China's sovereignty. And of course, during the past seven years, we have seen China enforcing that sovereignty in the South China Sea and also entering into new security arrangements in the South Pacific. Uh, Wang Yi, less than two years ago, visited eight countries in the South Pacific. China now has the biggest diplomatic presence in the region, and that is a concern not just to Australia, but also to New Zealand. And Adrian, it's worth noting that Wang Yi uh, is visiting Australia just as the US Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, is also visiting the region. That's right. That's the big geopolitical picture. Uh, Wang Yi has been in Australasia talking up trade while his US counterpart, Anthony Blinken, has been deepening old alliances in South Korea and the Philippines. The problem is, Darren, though, that many smaller nations in this region are wary of both China and the United States, and they don't want to be forced to pick sides during a time that analysts say we could be approaching the beginning of a second Cold War. All right, uh, Adrian Brown, live for us there in Wellington. Adrian, thank you.